You a praying man? I go to church. What's your nomination order? Episcopalian? Yeah, you are. You're a mainliner, ain't you? Yeah, I am. Are you saved? I'm baptized. <laughs> yeah, that ain't what I asked you. That ain't what he asked you. Yeah, go to what I was going Yeah, you got to listen. Are you saved? And welcome back, everybody. We are chatting with Kenny Richard of, of chnetwork.org, uh, which is the Coming Home Network, talking about how do Catholics or how should Catholics answer the question, are you saved? And yeah, great stuff, Kenny. And uh, like you said, right before the break, there really is a multitude of opinions as to, you know, once you, you are saved, what exactly is entailed in that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's true. Now, I happen to come from uh, primarily my my theological, practical, ecclesial roots are in the Pentecostal charismatic traditions, which tend to be, you know, Wesleyan, Arminian, um, you know, tracing back to not to the Calvinist um, uh, strands of <laughs> church right. history, but more to the Arminian strands for those who care to know the difference. You know, the Calvinist side of the house would tend to focus on things like once saved, always saved. So if, if you have accepted Jesus, uh, you are saved. Now, they'll want to say some things about the role of good works in that salvation and how they fit and how they come about. But generally speaking, a, a Calvinist uh, and, and those who are on that side of the Reformation, uh, Protestant Reformation, will say, you know, once saved, always saved. The Arminian side, Arminius would be the, the father of the, this way of thinking historically, would say, okay, yeah, uh, you, you become a Christian, but then you need to stay a Christian. You need to um, you need to cooperate with God, which actually is a it's the Catholic way of thinking about about salvation. So, you know, in nerdy theological terms, you have people that are monergistic and, and synergistic. I know you like to teach your audience, you know, terminology. Um, monergistic just means God alone is, is working. You know, we, we're sort of, if you will, the, the, benef the beneficiaries and, and or victims <laughs> of God's choices, um, uh, whether, whether we like it or not, you know, um, uh, monergism just means God alone is at work, mono ergos, one, one is working and that's God. Synergism means there's, there's two things at play, synergy. God is at work and he's the initiator, and then we cooperate with God's grace in some way. And that is actually the, the Catholic pers perspective. Uh, generally speaking, it's synergistic that we uh, mm -hmm. God initiates salvation. God's the author of salvation. God alone is Savior. We don't save ourselves, um, but we do participate with God. Now, well, the reason we say all that is because you can find a Protestant evan and or evangelical across a, a spectrum of belief there. So one of the things that, you know, if I was talking to a, a Protestant, I would try to find out which one they are. You know, hey, are you a once saved, always saved Protestant? Or are you a Protestant like, like I was? I believed, you know, in our doctrinal statement that you could apostatize from a real faith. You could, you could fall away. You could be a Christian, really be a Christian. And then at some point you could let go. You could turn your back um, like we would in in our denominational um, framework, we would say you can apostatize those three words. We would use them in a sentence. You can apostatize. And what we would mean is you you could have been a Christian who fell away from being a Christian. That seems to me and seems to me the most intuitive way of reading all these texts in the in the Bible uh, about salvation. But it's important, I think, to find out from your non-Catholic friend which which one they are. <laughs> um, but from but from there, uh, from there, then you can say, well, I can tell you what I mean by that if you want more. So we're trying to create a discussion, you know, with our non-Catholic friend um, when they say, "Are you saved?" Um, or have you accepted Jesus? I would say, absolutely, I've I have accepted Jesus, and 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 I believe I am 
saved, but I believe more than that. Like I can say even more than that if you want me to. And that's where we can start unpacking a little bit how to have a conversation with our non-Catholic friends. And I think there's at, at least three ways that you can um, as you as you peel out verses of scripture about saved salvation and and many non-catholics will agree with this not just catholicism many catholics non-catholics will agree that the bible talks about uh, having been saved as a as a past reality being saved as an ongoing process and then and then will be saved as a, as a future idea that you can find, if you want three buckets of salvation texts, you can find Bible text to drop into all three of those buckets. And so a Catholic could say to their, their friend, are you saved? He could say, or she could say, I, I have been saved, I'm being saved, and I will be saved. Do you want me to tell you what I mean by that? Okay. And... Uh, and then, and then we can have a Bible study, and maybe we could start just uh, uh, Gary. Well, for, first, let me let me stop there and, and just get your your feedback uh, on everything I've yeah. said so far. No, that's that's great because yeah, uh, what you want to do is expand uh, their idea. Like you said, they're looking for an, a single event, right? Right. Where you cross that threshold of salvation, and what you want to do is show that the the Bible shows that it is a, a process. So when you put into those three buckets of have been saved, are being saved, and will be saved, you're kind of sh challenging them, saying, "Hey, you know, there's biblical evidence that it's not just a one-time event; it's a whole continuum." Right. Right. Yeah, I love that approach. Yeah, I, and I think it's it's good it's good dialogue. But you know, just back to the motive of your friend. Your friend wants to make sure that you're really a Christian. So you you know, right out of the gate in this conversation, if someone says to you, dear Catholic, are you saved? You say yes, uh, and I believe in Jesus, and, and just like you, I, I'm I'm following Jesus. But can we unpack what you mean by that and what I mean by that as as a Catholic who may believe differently from you? But I but I do want you to know I I am a Christian. Are are you willing to hear more from me? Sure. Yeah. So if the, the answer is yes, then these three ways and and then really there's a, there's a, a fourth one um, as well that really ties to the third one. But the first one is uh, have been saved. If you say have you been saved? Well. Yes, I, I have been saved on the basis of a couple of texts of Scripture. That first bucket is, you know, uh, the past, you know. The, and this really is is uh, going back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, which says, Even when we were dead through our trespasses, uh, God made us to live together with Christ. And then in parentheses it says, By grace you are have been saved. And then a couple of verses later in verse eight, it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, uh, and not of works, lest anyone should boast. So this is emphasis on the, on the past. Well, what's interesting is when you bear down into the words there, uh, have been saved. This is, you know, again, ner get nerdy here, uh, but it's a perfect passive participle plural. Pa -pa 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 -pa. Perfect <laughs> passive participle yeah, plural. Say that four times quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and what it means now, the, the, the perfect part is that it's been accomplished, it's been done. Mm -hmm. The passive part is that it was done by somebody else and not you. Um, and the, the participle part is, is, we do this in English, we say, having eaten, or having gone to the store, or having taken a nap, um, then this comes next. And then plural. Now, interesting, by grace, now, if you have a King James Bible, it says, by grace are ye saved. And that's y'all, if you live in the South. So, and this is done in, in both texts. So what Paul is doing is not talking about some individual person, quote, getting saved, but rather that in the past, Jesus has accomplished everything necessary in order to bring about the salvation of the whole people of God by his own gracious goodness, his own charity, and his own love. Now, he has 
done that. And as I come to faith in him, I, I join into uh, that activity of God. I become a, par- a partaker in the past action of, of God. So really, the, by grace have you been saved, it really isn't about me, is it? Uh, and it isn't about you. It's about what Jesus has done in the past for everybody. So I could say as a Catholic, I believe, I 100% believe that what Jesus has done in the past is freely given by his grace. And as I come to faith in him, Ephesians chapter 1, that you having believed have been sealed. So as I've come to believe in him, I've become a participant, a partaker. All of that has become, that Jesus has done has become accessible to me. But those Ephesians texts are about what Jesus did for us on the cross. Um, and, and we become partakers in that saving work through faith, by grace, through faith. And, um, and so that, that kind of deals with the past. When we're talking about the past, we're talking about what Jesus has done. Now, what your Protestant evangelical friend is talking about is your past. <laughs> you know, have you accepted this? And again, I think the Catholic um, can always say yes to this. If you have been baptized, if you've been confirmed, uh, if you know, if you are walking, uh, with, you know, with Jesus, and in, in a Catholic sense, we think about this sacramentally. You're you're walking with the Lord in the sacraments as the guardrails of of your life. You are. Uh, participating in the the life of God and the saving work of Jesus that has been done for you. So I, as a Catholic, would just say, yeah, I, I have been saved, but it's Jesus who did that for me. Amen. I might say, my friend, Jesus is the one, you know, the one that did that. Um, he He's the one that, that saves. So let me, let me pause there. Any, any thoughts on the have been yeah. saved? You know, I never, um, I, I've been through that passage a lot. I never paid attention to the plural. So that's why I love talking to you, Kenny. It's, I always learn new things. Uh, <laughs> very interesting stuff. And yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense in that context. And it also puts in perspective that use. Cause as you know, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, I mean, that is uh, kind of a calling card for, you know, how you get saved. It, it really is. And it can also be sort of a beating stick, you know, yeah, from, right. your, from your, your non-Catholic friend on, on the back of a Catholic. But we can affirm that verse 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely.